Hello everyone, this is Darren here with Creativity Unleashed and today I'm going to be going over the zipline installation I did. Right now I am standing on a third floor and this is connected to steel cables up here to the forest floor and I'm in my um, harness and all ready to go down. I put in a really cool ladder to get off of the cable which I haven't seen anything quite like it. It has a brake and everything built into it. And then I, of course, have a separate bungee break, and we'll just go over the whole installation and give you an overview, not every single detail, but there is quite a few other videos that go into a lot of the fine details of tensioning the cable and some of that um, from ziplinegear.com and a few places like that. But we'll be going over some of the innovative things I did. This is stainless steel cable, it's 316, um, 516 cable. So, um, 400 foot so let's head down it and show you guys the ladder and all So you can see I've put a ladder up right here and it has some um, wheels on it. We'll show you that more closely. All right, so we're on the ladder right here. You can see that um, you're able to just stand right onto it. You can see right here how the ladder works. You're able to step onto it and once you do, it breaks and stops. And um, obviously you can move a bit side to side, but it um, doesn't go like out underneath backwards on you. So you can just climb up, disconnect the carabiner connection to your trolley and go down the ladder and the ladder slides right back. So of course right now it works extremely well. The only issue is, is the ladder has to be moved manually. So later I'm planning to put a pulley with a counterweight and a rope attached to the bungee brake so that when you hit the bungee brake you can later pull, grab the rope on the bungee brake and pull the ladder towards you. And when you get off, it'll automatically pull itself back to the like home position. So that'll take probably a little testing to get it figured out. And I plan to make another video when I get a chance to get that going. Of course, the only other complication that we are trying to figure out is how we can make it a little easier for kids to stay on the ladder while disconnecting the carabiner, which we designed a seat that could mount on the ladder, but it's a little complicated. All right, so you can see how the ladder is done right now. I had um, did a piece of tubing and added some plates and here are gate rollers. They're, um, these already have like a bushing so that the bolt fits it correctly. And then I'm using an old piece of tractor tire as the braking system so then when you step onto the ladder itself it um, lifts up and pushes the rubber against the cable and um, effectively stops it from being able to slide around. All right, so here's my bungee brake. This is a piece of old tractor tire. Um, and so now I've got a proper, like one inch thick rubber bumper. And obviously I've made it where that screws off of it. It's got some mahogany hardwood clumps that I had left over from a project. All right, so here's the tried and true bungee brake. And it consists of a piece of wood that has a hole drilled through it straight. Um, um, down the center of the two pieces so you can either um, drill the hole through it and then use a bandsaw to separate it or you can just clamp them together and use like a four center bit on a drill press it tends to work well and then of course the four bolt hole pattern and then I welded plates uh, drilled holes and plates and then welded the hooks that I've been out of some 3 8 ground bar and so then the whole thing gets sandwiched together and that um, makes sure that there is no way that the wood could like bust apart and come, come off. And then the part that actually would run into it, um, that the trolley would run into, I used some old tractor tire 
and did a little bit of work with this and it just screws on to the front and there's the bumper the recess so it just runs into rubber um so anyway there it is you can of course use it as a double bungee brake where it has two bungees or a single and of course i will probably put an automatic ladder return thing with a pulley i might do an update video in the future on how that could work so you can truly run it by yourself i of course have a spool of bungee cord i got this for about i think 45 dollars it's 50 foot the end anchor point there wasn't any trees that i thought would be safe or strong enough or in the right location and hence i decided to go with a metal post they recommend when you're using wood, if you're just using a single post, use a 12 inch post. I talked to some engineer friends of mine and my personal opinion is a four inch metal post would probably work, but there would probably be some bounce in it a little bit, even though it would never be unsafe. And so I went to a scrap yard to see what I could find. And I found this six inch, um, a little right at quarter inch wall pipe that they had for basically the same price as buying a four inch one new. And so this is, um, I have to trim it up and splice two 10 foot segments together and I'll get a 20 foot pipe. I think the line is going to attach around 15 or 16 feet up, but leaving it longer gives me more options in the future. I got a three quarter inch base plate that I'm going to be trimming up with the plasma and getting um, the attachment points connected to the rebar. I'm not gonna bury the posts because um, posts are pretty expensive. Um, the concrete, I think, and rebar comes out potentially a little cheaper, but also um, I don't really like the idea of just burying pipes in the ground. So um, yeah, let's get on with the project. All right, so here we have the rebar cage, this three quarter inch plate, some one inch rebar hooked on it. And then here's the hole down there. So here we are mixing up some concrete. It took quite a few wheelbarrows to fill it in and it's very necessary. You either need a very deep hole or a pretty substantial amount of concrete to hold it. All right, so we got the hole all done and that's held up there nice and leveled. And here is the cement, so we'll start putting it in. I also later ended up adding a quarter inch guy wire to help add a little more tension to the post to keep it from flexing, especially with heavier riders. And if you're interested in more details of the welding, I have a separate video on the channel, which I'm reviewing a new welding machine that's very economical, the Tulium 250. And in that video, I go into a lot more details of all the welding that went on to install the zip line. So if you're interested in that, check it out and you'll be able to learn a lot more of the details of all the welding that goes into putting in a project like this if you do it with welding. Well, we're off to an exciting day. We've got the post put in yesterday, got in a whole lot of 7018. You can see where the ladder is up there where the connection points are. We have got the 316 grade 5 a 16th stainless steel cable stretched out all the way up to where our attachment point is up there. As I had said before, you can find out the exact details of tensioning and installing a zipline cable on multiple of the other videos on the internet, so I don't really cover that in this video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content, and if you would like to see more videos like this, check out Creativity Unleashed. Uh, there's always um, new amazing projects like this going on. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and we'll try to make an update video on this.